A uh, very good evening to all the participants present here. Goel Brothers Prakashan would like to welcome you all. Uh, we will begin with the webinar now. Uh, today we have with us uh, Dr. Sanjeev Padvi. He is a PhD with 35 years of experience in school education. Uh, he is our author and subject matter expert. Till now, he has author authored almost three geography books for us. I would like to welcome you, sir. Uh, Thank you, sir. And uh, I would like to welcome all of our participants who have come here for this webinar. Uh, over to you, sir. We will begin the program now. Uh, <clears throat> over to you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, dear teachers. Thank you, sir. Okay. For joining today. Okay. And uh, yeah, I'll be sharing my screen. Okay. Uh, I okay. Yeah. My, I'll be sharing my screen all the time, dear teachers. And uh, you can take the screenshots, of course, whenever you wish to do. Uh, we have kept, uh, I think, last 15 to 20 minutes time for uh, discussion. Okay. And uh, uh, whatever queries you have, you can always uh, ask those queries at the end of this session. Okay. Uh, let us hope that uh, this uh, session will be very, very fruitful to you. Okay. And this is my experience, dear teachers, that uh, when, whenever we conduct it in this way, okay, I have always found that it's of much, much usefulness to all the people. Okay. So with that one, I will come you once more again. And I thank Goal Brother Prakashan also for giving me this opportunity to conduct the session. And uh, let us start now. Okay. So thank you very much. And dear teachers, okay, we are now, uh, now just look at this map and you will find that this map is showing you some physical features. Okay. Then you look at the next map, you find here, there are political features. So this map showing physical features. This one is showing you the, the political features. Then when I look at this map on my left-hand side, I find here there are the vegetation found. On my right-hand side, I find only the rivers. Now, if I try to find out in this vegetation uh, map to search for a city called Mumbai, or I try to search for a river called Godavari or Ganga, I will not find. Similarly, in the map of rivers, if I try to find out where are mountains and plateaus and plains and cities, I won't find them over here. Okay, so this map that you see right now in front of you are called as thematic maps. The, the theme of this map is vegetation. Theme of this map is rivers. Theme of this map is the states and the capitals of our country. But now when we want to have these all features in one map, let us say we want to see all these features in one map, can we show them? So the things become really very, very difficult. Example, he where this uh, desert is shown, dear teachers, if I, if I try to show here only the which river is flowing, which mountain is there, which plateau is there, which uh, whale is present, which road is going, all these things become very, very difficult. So then we have now another thematic map. Here we are finding the soils, here we are finding the roads. Now imagine a map, dear teachers, where you find combination of all these features. Now, for example, when I see here on the map, which is here, I find soils of India as the natural feature. On the right hand side, I find the road map, which is a man made feature. Okay. Similarly, here, this natural vegetation is a natural feature. This one is a natural feature. Okay. Now, but these political divisions are the man made features. So, when we look at a map which is consisting of each and every political feature, each and every natural feature, then we call those kind of maps by the topographic map. So topography map is basically what? So it is a combination of detailed features, which is showing you the man-made features and the political features, everything. Okay. Now, if you look at now, so how, then what do we say? What is the definition of the word topography? So dear teachers, okay, it is a broad term, which is showing us landmarks like mountains, plateaus, plains, valleys, forests present on the landmass, 
okay and all of them are definitely the natural features and we are also showing the man made features so which man made features we show so we show agriculture road house then post office and so many major features now if i start drawing here a actual post office or actual house or if i start drawing here the actual police station the things will become very difficult in such a small map how are we going to show all of them so we cannot show all these things in single map using the real pictures and therefore we have to come up with another idea of showing these features with the help of conventional signs and symbol the meaning of the word conventional signs and symbols are those signs those symbols which are accepted universally which are accepted by a whole group of people so we use variety of these conventional signs and symbols to show the features in a map and then we call that map by the topography map for example now when you look at this map you find here yellow color okay then you see here you find white color okay so conventionally it is said that if it is yellow color it shows agriculture if there is a white color it shows barren land if you see here this orange color road it is called as a metalled road so this is a conventional sign accepted for showing a metal road and the category of this one is of course the state highway so dear teachers when we are using these conventional signs and symbols in order to show in a detail every minute feature every minute feature right from the road to mountain plains valleys trees even small temple even the small hut everything shown in detail with the help of conventional signs and symbols is termed as topography map now if you look here as i already told you now here are some of the conventional signs and symbols example here you see a local color which is agriculture you see here a black color uh, something with the black color dots so it is a river with sediment you see a blue color line inside a river we call it by the name water channel then you see here a red color line drawn it is called a cart track so what we have done so we are using the signs and symbols to show the natural feature like river natural feature like the perennial water channel and the man made feature like car track another man made feature like here yellow color is agriculture so what are we doing so we are using the accepted conventional signs and symbols to show the man made features and natural features example some of them here are this is a symbol for a temple this is a symbol for chhatri this one is a symbol for a church okay now the, here is a natural feature greenish in color it is a jungle so what we have done so we have used man made uh, that, that means we have shown some man made features using the conventional signs and symbols and also here a natural feature now dear students in topography maps we use dots we use lines we use colors just now i showed you about some colors i showed you some dots okay then we also use alphabets we use the lines in order to draw now, for example here is a line which is drawn vertical line here is one horizontal line here is one black color line so we are using variety of dots lines colors alphabets etc in a topography map using conventional signs and symbols the very basic idea of a topography map dear to teachers is to show now if i take the earth on earth we show the latitudes and then we show the longitudes in a very same way in a topography map we use the horizontal lines and vertical lines 
these horizontal lines which are drawn in red color are known as northings whereas the lines which are drawn here in red color which are straight lines vertical lines we call them by the name eastings okay so a topography map consisting of eastings and northings and you can see here eastings 22 23 24 their number is increasing from left to right similarly the northings number 0 9 10 then here is 11 12 the number is increasing in upward direction it is just like a graph. If I start in a graph, suppose this is zero marking. As we go on a right side here, one, two, three, four, the number increases as we move eastward. Eastward, number is increasing eastward. Similarly, one, two, three, four, five, as we move up, the number is increasing northward. So we call them northings, these straight lines, okay? Uh, these straight horizontal lines are northings and vertical lines are eastings. So in this way, you know, basically a topography map consists of northings and eastings. And what is the use of these northings and eastings? With the help of the numbers which are given over here, teachers, we are able to give a reference. We are able to give a reference. What do I mean by this? Okay, now look here for example uh, yes now this number is here 22 this number is 23 here is number 24 and here is something called x and i want to tell you come on look in the look at x now where is x i, I want to give a reference of the x so first we have to give the reference using the left line this left line is 23 then I am using another line which is exactly below this, this line. This line is associated with a 10. So then I will say, okay, X is present in 2310. So now you can see here a square is formed. This square is known as grid square. This square is called grid square. And you can see here I how many numbers I used? One, two, three four numbers i used therefore we call it by the name four figure grid reference okay similarly if i write here a letter y and we want to find out the four figure grid reference so first i will see on my left hand side which number is there so here the number 24 is there so i will write here first 24 then i will see the number which is below this y here it is 10. So 2410. If there is a something called P, so the number will be 2208. So in this way, Eastings and Northings help us to help us to give a reference. Okay. Now, as I already told you, the numbers increase from left to right and from bottom to top. Okay. Now. Now here I have given this example, okay? Suppose here is a number A. So what is a four figure grid reference of A? So I will see on the left hand side, here number is 17. I will look below, the number is 45. So A is present in 1745. Similarly, this B is present in 1943. So in this way, we can show the four figure grid references, okay? Now, if you see here, teachers, here is a circle, red color circle with a cross inside it. It is a symbol for the hospital. And uh, in case in exam, they ask you, where is, uh, give the four figure grade reference of hospital. So then we see the left side. Then children say, here is no number. But we see the number here, 26. So the number will decrease on this side. So this number will be here. 25. So it will be 25 and below number is 56. So 25, 56. So in this way, we can show the four figure grid reference. Now, please remember six figure grid reference is not in 2023 examinations. Okay. So we do not have to worry about it. But in next year's examinations, this six figure grid reference is definitely there. And then we might have another workshop next year.
to deal with all these basic things okay now so here is another symbol you can see here with blue color okay this blue color outline is known as unlined veil the veil without a wall around it so its grid number is here number is 26 and the below number is 55 so 26 55 and so on okay now dear teachers in this way we have seen what are stings what are northings then we have also seen what is a grid square so in case the question is asked what is a grid square in a topography map so answer is very simple grid square is a square that is formed by intersection of eastings and northings okay now another extremely important part of a map is scale of a map okay now dear teachers suppose here is x okay and here is a place called y and they suppose the question is asked how much is the distance between these two places on the ground on ground how much is the distance on a map we can find out so then in order to find out this distance on ground we have to look at scale of a map which is actually a ratio of the map distance to the ground distance please remember on topography map for grade 10 examination the scale of the map is two centimeter to one kilometer which simply means two centimeter if you actually see this distance teacher using your scale you will find it is two centimeter exactly similarly this distance is also two centimeter exactly two centimeter so that means on ground it will be one kilometer long and this one will be one kilometer broad so one square is giving us the the area of one kilometer by one kilometer that is one square kilometer area okay so scale of a map actually it is a ratio and there are three types of scales one i already told you we call it by the name verbal scale in which they directly tell you that how many centimeter on a map is equal to how many kilometer on ground for example for our topography map it is two centimeter is equal to one kilometer suppose here suppose i said in a map of india it is written one centimeter to 100 kilometer and now suppose here is one place called x and here is another place called y and if they ask you the ground distance so we will actually keep the scale suppose this distance is suppose i say five centimeter so now we know that two centimeter is equal, sorry here one centimeter is equal to 100 kilometer so five centimeter will be 500 kilometer so a scale gives us the ratio between the map distance to the ground distance so we have another scale teachers at a base of topography map you will find this scale you will find a line over here this line is called as linear scale okay linear scale now what happens suppose this map is a very small map so if i enlarge the map teachers what will happen then the distance between this place x and place y will also increase and then i will not get the correct answer on my map yes or no if if, if this map says that here is one centimeter suppose this this says one centimeter equal to 100 kilometer suppose i enlarge this map so naturally this distance will increase so it becomes more now if i measure this distance now this distance may be 15 kilometer so that means in a small map this distance is 500 but on a big map it becomes 1500 so it gives us a wrong idea therefore we need this another scale called as linear scale okay the benefit of this scale dear teachers that if the map is enlarged this scale also gets enlarged in a same ratio if the map is reduced in size this scale also gets reduced in size so therefore we have another scale called as linear scale and then we have third scale called as representative fraction also called as rf scale now what is rf scale 
Now, teacher, suppose I tell you that one centimeter is equal to 10 kilometer, it becomes easy to understand. So, this is very easy, one centimeter equal to 10 kilometer. But suppose we go in a country where it is written, one centimeter is equal to 100 fathom. Okay, now it becomes difficult. Why it becomes difficult? That many people will not know the meaning of the word fathom. That means now this is understood, but the word fathom is not understood. So in such a case, the verbal scale becomes useless. But if it is written on a map, one is 200, so I will at least get one idea that if I take one unit on map, I will have to go 100 unit on ground. That means if I take one centimeter on ground, I will go, sorry, one centimeter on map, I will go 100 centimeter on ground. So a representative fraction uses the number. It does not use the, uh, the, the, the unit and therefore it is the most widely used scale because it makes sense to everyone. When it is written here, one centimeter equal to 50,000, which simply means if I take one centimeter here on map, I will be taking 50,000 centimeter on ground. Okay. So in this way, this is called as scale of the map. So we have three scales of the map given in a topography map. Okay. Now. Uh, sir, you are on mute. You are not audible. Can you please unmute? Yeah, thank you, sir. Yeah. See, teachers. Okay, so the year is now. Uh, this is uh, now yellow color. Yellow color stands for agriculture. We have already seen. Blue color for water. Green color for forest. So these colors also give us an idea about the uh, about the nature of the land. It gives us the idea about the rainfall. For example, if I ask you that uh, on which side of the river there is more rainfall, so because the river is flowing here in this direction, you can say, okay, on the left bank of a river, it seems to be more rainfall. How do we know? Because we see a lot of green color. A lot of green color means a lot of forest. So that means by looking at colors, we get to know what type of um, landform, not landform, what type of occupation is also carried over there. It also gives us an idea about the climate of that area. Okay, so in this way, these colors play very important role. So major colors used are blue, green color stands for forest, yellow for agriculture, white color, okay, white color, if the white color is outside the river, now this, this blue here is a river. If the white color is outside the river, it is called a barren land. But if you see the white color patch inside the river, it is river island. So in this way, we get a lot of information because of colors that are used in a map teachers. Okay, now, um, now this scale also help us to calculate the distance as I already told you. Suppose here is a place called X, okay, and here is a place called Y. So you can actually keep the scale between these two places, okay? And let us say, teachers, the this distance is let us say five kilo, five centimeter. So on ground, how much will be the distance? So we solve this in the following steps. Step number one: map distance. So we say, okay, map distance is five centimeter. What is scale of the map? So the scale of the map is two centimeter is equal to one kilometer. Therefore, this five centimeter will become five upon two, that is 2.5 kilometer. So in this way, scale help us teacher, okay? This scale also help us to calculate the area, okay? For example, uh, now from 22 to 25, if I want to go, okay? So now we know this is one kilometer, this is one kilometer, this is one kilometer. So the length here is 25 minus 22 is equal to three kilometer. Uh, 
Similarly, from 9 to 12, if I want to go, so 12 minus 9 becomes again 3 kilometers. So 3 multiplied by 3 becomes 9 square kilometer is the area on ground. Okay. So in this way, teachers, we are able to calculate the distance and area. Now look at this map carefully. Okay. Here you find a village. Okay. Here you find agriculture being done. Near this village, there is a forest. In front of this village, there is a road and a cart track is going nearby a village. Now, how in reality will this place appear that there has to be a village, there has to be a road, jungle, forest. So it will appear somewhat like this. So you can see here a village. You see a road going over there. You can see agriculture being carried here. You can see the forest that is present over here. So, whatever is seen here in this picture here, in reality, it appears like this. So, when you show the pictures like this to the students and tell them, teacher, students, that this one here that you see here are the houses. So, in reality, how will it appear? So, it appears this way. Then you see the green color over there, the forest. So, the forest appears this way. And in this way, teachers, the things become quite easy for students to understand. Then in topography map, they already, they always provide this index. Please remember in board examination, you will find that this index is provided at the base of every map. It is provided. Okay. So uh, please remember that it is provided and you do not have to worry about it with the meanings they have given what what is the symbol of expressway what is the symbol of a road what is the symbol of unmetal road this is already provided in every topography sheet okay i have shown here for example a red color line means a cut track if you see a broken red line which is a pack track if you see a dotted red line it's a footpath okay and so on now Similarly, symbols of post office, symbol of uh, police station, these are to be learned by heart by the students. Dispensary, then hospital. If you see the blue color one, that is the veterinary hospital and so on. Okay, now overhead tank, flat sand. Okay, I'll be showing you these symbols to make you understand in a better way. Okay, all this I'm going to show you. Now look here example. Now, in this picture, you will find, okay, that, uh, <clears throat> see here, this magenta color, okay, this is national highway, it is already mentioned here. Now, in uh, symbols, they write down that the transport routes according to importance. Now, if this is a national highway, compared to this, the width of this road is a little less orange color road. So, if this is the most important one, so the next important one will be definitely state highway. And compared to state highway, the width of this one, yellow one is even less. These are the district roads. All of them in general are metal roads that means made up of tar. Now teachers, along with these numbers, uh, sorry, these uh, roads, you will find some numbers written. For example, 118, 119, 117, all written in red color, okay? They indicate kilometer stone, okay? They indicate kilometer stone. Now, in this picture, as you can see here, this is a national highway. This 333 indicates that there is some place 333 kilometer from here. This orange color road is a state highway. This yellow one will be the district road and so on. Now, when we uh, show the teach the children, we can actually show teachers the, the, the symbol here. Okay, children say this is national highway. So this road is actually a national highway. And uh, uh, if it is a district road, okay, so this is a district road. And as I was telling you, 117 indicate a kilometer stone. So when you show to the children, okay, see, this is a kilometer stone. So the things become more easy for them to understand. That you see the state highway here, you also see the number here. This stone is called as kilometer stone. 
okay this is another kilometer stone this is a district road now many times a question is asked in examination what is a causeway now teachers you will find here a stream see this stream okay now this stream is having water so the vehicles will find it difficult to cross it so they have constructed here a road a bridge like structure i said bridge like structure this bridge like structure is called as causeway but definition we cannot see bridge like we have to say it is a raised metal road over a stream or river so in this way when we show the pictures to the students in reality the things become very easy for them to understand okay then teachers okay we have seen the roads now if i look here this road is not completely formed it seems to be the road under construction then we call it by the name unmetal road this is a symbol of unmetal road and it is seen seen in a map in this way you can see here unmetal road over here now sometimes you will find the words graveled written near the road graveled that means you will find really a gravel that is taken from river is put up on the road here the reason is this that the road should not become marshy neither should it become dusty in dry season and marshy in rainy season okay then cart track you can show now see this, this red color line here is a cart track so you can actually show the picture things become easy for student then a footpath this black this dot color dotted red color line i told you a footpath now when we talk about the word footpath to the students who are living in cities they may imagine the footpath where the sailors are selling the articles like uh, caps and goggles so we have to tell them children footpath means in topography the patch which is formed by walking of people so footpath is formed by foot movement of people okay and this is a symbol that is seen over there now <clears throat> similarly the another word is pack track okay so when these animals will walk on the path because of their movement the patch is formed this patch is called as this patch which is formed because of the walking of the animal is known as pack track now major colors we have already seen teachers okay now so you can show these pictures to the student and things become very easy for them now when sometimes the word open scrub is used now look here you can show this picture to them and tell children that this small grass cactus like plants that you see growing over here means open scrub okay so you can show this word open scrub to them okay and now here is forest so the what will be the occupation in forest so you can say forestry is an occupation so colors give us lot of information okay green color also indicates animal rearing animal rearing is carried out okay and when you see the white patch like this white patch over here okay then it is barren land the land where nothing can be cultivated okay now some of the major problems now okay many terms are used teachers now you can see here the word sluice then we it becomes very difficult to explain what is a sluice so the best way to explain the word sluice is show them the picture okay i'll show you the picture of sluice after some time okay now dear teachers in a topography map one of the biggest problem for it, for us teachers is to explain some of the points okay so what you can do you can always draw here a diagram like this telling them that suppose this is a hill okay now somebody who is standing at this position suppose he is at 100 meter above the sea level somebody standing here he is also 100 meter above the sea suppose somebody stands here so this height is 200 so similarly if somebody stands here this height is also 
so the lines which will join these places will be called as contour lines so you can show them that this all these lines which are drawn here are known as contour lines okay now what you can do after you show this suppose we draw here a line and take this point over here now this 200 line is going here this 200 line is going here and when i join them together i get here a circular line okay it is difficult to draw with a mouse dear teachers okay uh, suppose we draw this line this line okay this is a tip over here so this line is suppose 100 meter height above the sea level this is also suppose 100 meter and we are connecting them together so this line becomes a circular line we will call this line by the name contour line okay now please remember that when these contour lines are drawn together let me try to draw again with mouse as i said it becomes a little difficult to draw with mouse suppose teachers this height is 100 200 meter above the sea level suppose this height is 100 meter above the sea level okay now if i join this 100 line with the 100 line it becomes a circular line 200 line with the 200 line it becomes a circular line so it appears somewhat like this so we will say okay this is appearing like a circular lines it means it is a conical hill so you can explain that how so now you can show this picture to them and ask them what is this over here so then they will say acha all these circular lines are joining so this map indicating here a hill okay please remember if the altitude is less than 300 i repeat if the altitude is of the circular lines if they are there okay and if you find the number written here is around 300 then we call it by the name hillock or knoll the word used is knoll or hillock but actually now this year we do not have to write about it generally the hill is having the height of between uh, 300 to 600 meter above the sea level okay now another very important thing please look here suppose this altitude is 260 this altitude is also 260 so these lines are taken up and now here is the joining of these two lines now here this altitude is 240 this is also 240 so the 240 line is connected here now we find that here the distance between these two lines is great whereas distance here is not very great so if i come down here and if i come down here i find steep slope and but between these two contour lines if i come down here i find the gentle slope so we can tell the students that if the distance between the contour lines is less this is more so if the distance here is less the slope is steep so this is a steep this one is even more steep whereas this slope here will be gentle because the distance between the contour lines is more so in this way contour lines help us to identify the landforms they also help us to identify the slope of the land now teachers you will find between these contour lines the distance is now if i see this 240 here i find the number 260 the distance between them is 20 meter. now between this 240 and 220 the distance is again 20 meter this distance between the two contour lines this distance between two contour lines is called as contour interval and in india the value of the contour interval is 20 20 meter actually okay so you can see here the distance is more okay between these two contour lines and with the same contour lines on other side the distance is less less the distance steeper the slope more the distance gentle the slope okay so in this way we get to know about now the contour lines now in between these contour lines you will find some of the lines are thick 100 200 
300. So these are thick, they are highlighted lines. We call them by the name index contour. Okay. Now, here are some more features, dear teacher. Okay. Now, you can see here the arrow. This arrow indicate in which direction the river is flowing. Okay. So it is flowing. Now, if I start here, if I go this side, I go to the west. If I go this side, I am going to the south. So the river is going in southwest direction. So in whichever direction the river goes, we have to see on that side. Then if I see in this direction, this is my left side. This is my right side. So we will say this is a left bank of a river. This one is a right bank of a river. So arrow in a river indicates in which direction the river is flowing and another idea to find out in which direction the river is flowing. Now you see here a number 169. This is the altitude. Here the altitude is 150. Here the altitude of the land is 149. So the altitude is decreasing in this direction. So therefore the river will be flowing in this direction. So the another way to find out in which direction the river is flowing is to look at the at the spot height given near by the river. Okay, now teachers, you will see this. The river is flowing here. On one side you find a barren land, other side you find a forest. Okay, so you can show them a picture. That TC student on one side there is barren land, on other side there is a forest. So this way the things become more clear to them. Now there is something called settlement pattern. But before that, please remember that if you see in a map, a square like this, it is called as temporary hut. But if you see a square which is completely shaded inside, it is called as permanent hut. And when there are many, many permanent huts together, they become a settlement. Okay, and the pattern is called as settlement pattern. For example, this is that permanent hut, okay, which is shown over here. Then this is, if this is a permanent hut, this one is a temporary hut. So it will be shown by this square this way. Okay, now please see this. Now, look here now in this square teacher, you find one house two house and they three house and they are away from each other. We call it by the name scattered settlement pattern. Here in this entire grid, sorry, here, I find only one house. It is called isolated settlement pattern. And when the houses are close to each other, it is called as nucleated settlement pattern. In this year's examination, we have only scattered and nucleated settlement pattern. Even linear is not there. Isolated is also not there in 2023 exam. Okay, now this is isolated house or you can say now here you can show this house is away from other house. So this is scattered settlement. Okay, so houses are present away from each other. So scattered settlement. Now here all the houses are seen close to each other like this. Okay, so Hari Hariyawada in this way is showing us the nucleated settlement pattern. This is linear. Now we have drainage pattern. Now drainage means if a river is flowing, the other rivers are joining the main river. So they show here a pattern or if, the, if there is a hill like this. So some rivers are flowing here, some are flowing here, some are flowing here, some are flowing there. So they form a pattern. This pattern is called as drainage pattern. Okay. For example, now in topography map, please remember dear teachers, these black lines are actually the dry streams. Okay. Now look at now these dry streams, they are forming here a pattern. Okay. Now, if I look at the pattern which is present here, this pattern is different than the pattern seen here. Okay. 
The first one here is called as dendritic drainage pattern, which looks like the roots of a plant. Whereas here we find the main stream is getting connected by the smaller streams, more or less at right angle. We call it by the name trellised drainage pattern. So here is trellised, here is dendritic. There is another drainage pattern in examination. Okay, this is actual the trellised drainage pattern in reality. See how it is seen. Okay, this is a dendritic. Okay. In dendritic, if this is a main stream, the other streams are meeting the main one at angle, which is less than 90 degree like this. Okay, now, see, this is that river island I was talking about some time back. Now, this is dendritic drainage pattern. Okay, now look here. If, the, if there is a hill, so the rivers will be flowing in all the directions. We call it by the name radial drainage pattern. So you can see here this hilly region and the uh, streams are moving away from the center here. So this is called as radial drainage pattern. Now, if you look at this river teachers, inside river you will find the black spots. These black spots here indicate sediment in the river. Okay, now here in this river you will find a blue line and also the black dots. So the black dots here are sediment and the blue line indicate little bit water flowing in river. Now, whenever children see blue, blue color and we ask them what is occupation, so they say fishing. So you can always tell them that children look at this picture. Do you think in this small channel you can carry out fishing? So, so they will say no. So we can always discourage them from writing the occupation as fishing by showing the live pictures like this, which make them understand better. Okay, now see this is that sediment here, black dots and a water channel. So this water channel is seen here, see. Can we carry out fishing here? Of course not. That is why fishing cannot be occupation if only a small water channel is seen in a river. Similarly, black dots indicate the sediment. We also call it by the name load. Okay, This sediment is also known by the name L-O-A-D, load. Now, this is that river island I was talking about. Say this. Now, uh, please remember these white color patches inside rivers also indicate extremely huge stones which are present in the river. So not every time necessarily island, they also indicate huge stones in the river. Then I was talking about the word sluice and I said I will be showing you a picture later on. Look at this sluice teacher, okay? The words written here, sluice. Now look at this picture. Now, these are the gates, okay, which are sliding gates, which can be opened and closed to regulate the flow of water. Such a structure is known by the name sluice. Then this is another sluice you can see here. This gate, okay, you can be, it can be opened or closed. This is called sluice. See the term sluice, okay. So, there is no symbol for the word sluice. You will directly find the words sluice written. Now, aqueduct. Now, please understand here is the dam. From this dam, a blue color line is started. Remember, this blue color line is not the aqueduct. This blue color line is actually a canal. It is a canal. And wherever you see the word aqueduct written, it means from this canal, they have taken a small water channel to supply water. Okay, it means if this is a canal over here, okay, in which the water is flowing, okay, and if the word here is aqueduct written, that means a small water channel is taken from this canal, which will be supplying water to these places, wherever the aqueduct is moving. Okay, so then another term which is very, very important is siphon. 
Now remember, there is no symbol for the word siphon, but instead of that, the word siphon itself is written, which is this bent pipe. You see this bent pipe here? This bent pipe is known as siphon. Please remember, there is no symbol of siphon. The word siphon itself written over there. Then, <clears throat> see this. So if this is a what, if this is a canal, so wherever the word aqueduct is written, that means from those places, those small water channels are taken, okay? Then there is another word, okay, which is newly introduced last year's examination. The word is a diggy. And remember the symbol of a diggy is a blue color square, which is completely shaded. And the words written nearby are diggy. Now remember, there is another symbol called cover tank has the same symbol, but the words written there are covered tank. The words are written covered tank. So when you see the words diggy written over there, so what is a diggy? So now you can see here a small pit in which the farmer has collected water, dear students, from a canal. And then this water will be utilized by the farmer when there is no water available okay let me explain this to you suppose here is a canal okay now the can the water is released from a dam in a canal okay and let us say my farm is present here and now no water is being supplied by the canal for a few days so what the farmers will do when the aqueduct is taken here, so they dig a pit near the farm and in this pit, they will collect water that is released from the dam. So this water, which is collected here, will be known as a diggy, okay, this water. But if you find the diggy inside a town where there is no canal seen, then it will be simply a small pit that is constructed over there and in that pit people are collecting rainwater for further use but generally generally the diggy is diggy is generally uh, its main function is to collect the, the 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 canal water for further use okay now this is that canal i was talking about okay now <clears throat> You will also find some important symbols in topography map. For example, see here this blue color one, blue one. Okay, this blue one I'm talking about. This blue one is called as the, the symbol is blue color like this. It is veterinary hospital, hospital for animals. So you can show them the picture like this, okay? But if the symbol is shown with a red color, then it is hospitals for human beings. So see here is a veterinary hospital that is seen over there. Okay. But if it is in a red color, as it is seen here in the lower picture, see here, then it will be the hospital for human beings. If the word um, Ayurvedic is written, it simply means that hospital is Ayurvedic hospital. Now, another important thing, uh, sometimes you will find, now look at this structure here. We say this is embankment and it is drawn with black color. When the embankment is drawn with black color, it indicates the structure is made up of rocks, it is made up of sand, it is made up of soil. So such a structure which is made up of sand, soil, clay, etc. is known as Ardhan Dam. The word used is Ardhan Dam. And Ardhan Dam, okay, are shown with which color I said? This is black color embankment. Okay. Now, this see this black color embankment. This is Ardhan Dam. And here is an example. In map, it is shown this way. But if you see the red color embankment as it is shown here, red color embankment, then we call it by the name masonry dam cement concrete dam okay now here in this picture 
some part of the dam is earthen dam here this part is also earthen dam but do you see here red color in between so some structure here inside is having the masonry structure so now then another important thing i was talking about the <coughs> covered tank okay now here you see the word written covered tank here see covered tank so this is the picture of a covered tank you can see here this woman looks like from a tire the rajasthani woman desert area now the tank will be covered so that the water does not get evaporated and second thing the tank is covered so that water should not get polluted water should not get contaminated so the tanks are covered and then definitely this water will be used for drinking purpose see this covered tank here okay now then this is a symbol of a overhead tank okay then yes <clears throat> now another very uh, interesting thing to remember please understand this now here you find a blue color structure okay and this is a well dear student well now this well has a got wall around it we call it by the name perennial lined well now if you see here this this is another well here but without wall around it so this is called as unlined well and symbol is a blue circle outline generally these unlined wells are seasonal and they don't have water throughout the year now then this structure that you see blackish color this this is called as power line main power line now please remember teachers a main power line will be a line like this then a circle there which is completely shaded like this then another completely shaded circle then it is see here so this is main power line okay completely shaded circle but if you see only the outline circle like this then it is known as unsurveyed power line please remember the word unsurveyed power line okay now the cost of transmission line that means how much will be this line uh, leading up will cost to the government it will depend upon the route chosen that means where you have to carry the supply of electricity to which distances so how much will be the cost of putting up so we call it by the name unsurveyed power line symbol is black circle which is not completely shaded this is called rocky norm okay this is another feature children keep on asking so it is a protruding part of a rock which is overlooking a valley in case the word rocky knob is written in a hilly area otherwise rocky knob simply a protruding part of a rock like this this is called rocky knob then rest house symbol okay these are the places where people when well, the government official can go and take rest when they are on duty otherwise in rest house even you and me can go and stay but for that we will have to pay the money okay symbols of the rest house is shown here see this okay now circuit house please remember the symbol of circuit house and this one are quite similar but in a rest house you can see the upper part is white upper part whereas in a circuit house the upper part is black so this circuit house is actually a place where during british era the tax was collected by the british people okay nowadays we use this office for government offices for x y z purpose okay but during british time circuit house was uh, used to collect the taxes now sometimes you find the words written boundary demarcated that means there is no official fence between the boundaries of the two places for example you see here maharashtra written and here gujarat written and this is the boundary where there is no fencing nothing is there so we call it undemarcated boundary now look here now this boundary seems to have a well defined boundary structure over here see this it's written here welcome to gujarat 
okay this side is maharashtra this side is gujarat and you can actually see a boundary when that kind of boundary is there we call it by the name demarcated boundary now in topography maps when you see this yellowish line with the black dots inside it indicates tehsil boundary this is called tehsil boundary okay now uh, if i look at this uh, forest dear teacher okay there is no where it is written fire line but sometimes you will find the words written fire line and the symbol is such a black color broken lines and the words are written over there fire line meaning of this fire line simply means that you can look at this picture here now that will help you to understand what is a fire line okay i always show a picture like this to my students and i ask them children will the fire spread from this end to this end so they say chances are less so that means such a line where the trees are purposely cut to avoid the spread of fire is called fire line you can see here the fire is all present here but here no fire is seen that means this patch has saved this side of a forest so you can see here the fire line symbol okay so it's a cleared patch of forest to avoid the spread of fire then you will also find the words like brick okay see here the word brick is written and the symbol so brick when you will find such a word okay it simply means there is a brick kiln and whenever you see the word brick kiln here the bricks will be heated to make them hard now sometimes you will find the words written see here limestone quarry now quarry is actually a place from where useful stones are extracted now from this quarry they must be extracting the limestone therefore the word here is limestone quarry then you will also find sometimes this black color circle like this and another black circle circling it and the word is written there line as it is seen in this picture here which means it is a line kiln where, where limestone will be heated to convert it into to convert it into quick lime so lime kiln is a place please remember where limestone is is heated to convert into quick lime okay now stone quarry sometimes the word is used so place from where useful stones are extracted okay now teachers sometimes you will find the words written depression in a map okay which simply means there are actually the depressions like this in the sand okay so this is a sand zone whereas this hollow structure is called as depression and in temple we know very well okay some ha nah, this word chatri now if you look at this picture okay you will get a feeling that this seems to be a palace okay it seems to be a palace like structure now dear teachers a chatri in olden days was put up on a house of royal people okay on a so this kind of structure you will find on a house of a royal people and we call it by the name chatri so it is a structure that was built on a house of noble men this structure was also built in order to keep the important articles like scent okay any scent is there so his uh, sandals will be kept over there or his kamandalu will be kept there so chatris were made for that purpose also to keep the articles used by the important sages important saints and this structure was also constructed on the house of noble men now for example look at these chatris here okay okay so now this building itself gave us impression that it looks like a palace okay of course now kings and queens don't live there we use them these days now for some work for government offices or maybe as monument <clears throat> now <clears throat> next then this is a simple symbol structure sorry this is police station 
now dear teachers you can actually show the picture like this to the student police station and sometimes the word police chowki is written now you can very easily explain to the students that police station is a bigger law keeping body and under each police station in various areas they have police chowki so then these things become very clear to the students okay then rock out crop now look here do you see here is a land and all of a sudden this rock seems to be coming out of the land we call it by the name rock out crop example if this is the land dear student and if here is a underground rock so some part of the rock is seen over the land over the surface we call it by the name rock out crop then you will find the some symbols like this in a map especially in a map of mount aku so that is a symmetry or graves okay now <clears throat> some now many times the children get confused about one very important thing and that is the word called surveyed tree so symbol looks like a balloon okay and there may be a number written it near it 324 and children are write down the height of the tree is 324 meter which is absolutely wrong a tree cannot have a height of 324 t 20 180 meters like this please remember the coconut tree teachers coconut tree itself in india is having height of approximately 18 to 20 meter so you ask children that if you see a tree there and a number is written 181 over there how can a tree be having height of 181 meter so you can tell them it indicates the height at which the tree is present okay so now here survey tree 321 indicating the altitude of 321 at which the tree is located now benchmark okay now you see here the number bm 225.3 is written so this number is written inside a map but if you actually go to chitrasani this height is altitude of the chitrasani is written on a stone on a big building in reality so the height is shown at the place real place as well as in a map then we call it by the name benchmark okay now for example this altitude here whatever is there is shown here on a place and the same altitude will be also shown in a map also then we call it by the name benchmark then you will find the words dispensary return please remember symbol is simply a plus sign which indicates primary health center so you can tell children that if this woman is having fever so she doesn't need any Uh, blood test and all that one immediately a primary treatment will be given where the government people will give her some medicine to uh, lower down her fever like for example children very well know the name uh, crocine so you can tell them crocine paracetamol and this kind of primary treatment is given at dispensary okay then dry streams i have already explained to you a black line indicates a dry stream see this then disappearing stream now this river will flow 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 but i don't think the water will last for long time so the water will disappear so that is called disappearing stream so you can see here the stream okay the water seems to be flowing and all of a sudden water disappeared but anyway now this disappearing stream is not in syllabus at present this exam okay now you can see here a river and near river you can see the land having cracks so this structure is called as broken ground so you can show the picture to the students and tell them this is broken ground then the word embankment i already told you teachers okay here you see the reddish color embankment so it is a masonry structure this embankment will always stop the flow of water and save the water for example uh, i purposely show this picture to the students and i ask them that what will happen if this wall is broken 
So they say the water will flow away. So I say then that embankment in this way is helpful to store water, to stop the wastage of water and to make this water useful in future. Now dry tank, when you show the symbol of a dry tank, okay, it is always shown with black oval shaped structure with the black dots. So the students may not understand what is it. So you can actually show them the picture, okay? Then tank with embankment, okay? So the symbol will be this, okay? This is a tank and this one will be the embankment like this. In annual fair, it's a place of social gathering. People gather here for offering puja, for entertainment, for trade, for business and so on, okay? Now, annual fair. So you can actually show them a picture like this and tell them children, this is called annual fair. It is social activity. Then post office, okay, sand dunes. Now this is unlined whale and so on, okay? Sometimes the words are stony west, okay? So the stones which are just lying here, of no use, we call it by the name stony west, okay? Now, this is open scrub and so on, okay? Actually, there are so many things to explain, but we don't have much time, so that's why I'm simply rushing through, okay? Then Mount Abu, children, many times the question is asked that what is the main occupation? So we always tell them that Mount Abu is having tourism, so then you can actually see for the words written there, anadra point. This is real anadra point, okay? Then you will find the words written, the crags. So the crags is a place where adventure sports like mount, the rock climbing is done. Then you will find the words written there, sunset point. So all these are tourist attraction. Then some you will also find the words written there, falls seven meters which actually means a waterfall of seven meter height. So all these indicate that Mount Abu is a tourist destination. So in this way, then there is, you'll find the word Nakhi Talao. So this is Nakhi Talao, useful for boating and so on. Okay, so then there is Jain temple and so many other things. Now teachers, besides that, okay, there are certain things that is to be learned by heart in a topography map for which there are no answers written in a topo sheet. So you have to tell the children that you will have to learn the meaning of the word representative fraction, scale, contour, contour line, then index contour, that highlighted number, triangulated height, spot height, benchmark, and so on. Yes, this relative height and relative depth. Now, please remember, uh, this is a very, very important thing which I'm telling you now. See, if you see a suppose here is a river, okay? Suppose this is a river and the number is written here 3R written in black color, this is a river. Now, according to the rules now, if the number is written in black, black, 3R is written in black, then it is always relative height. So we will say here, if here is a river, so the relative height of the bank of the river is three meter. But if now the words are written in blue color, now suppose there is a small, whale and the number is written in 10 r now this number is written in blue color now it is called as relative depth of 10 meter so now according to the rule if the number is in blue it is relative depth if it is in a black it is relative height so the relative height word will be used for the river bank also for the tank also for the embankment, also for the sand dunes. Sometimes there are sand dunes, okay, brown color spots are there like this, many, many brown color spots. And the number is written there, 10 R, which means the relative height of the sand dune then is 10 meters. So please remember, 
that if r is written in black it is relative height if the number is written in blue it is relative depth and neither relative height nor relative depth are to be written above the sea level okay then broken ground fire line all these words children will have to know what is causeway what is embankment and so on okay so in this way uh, there are many other things teachers okay that can be studied about map work sorry topography but i have just touched some of the important points and now we will be uh, going immediately to the map pointing and as i promised at the end i will be uh, dealing with some questionnaires and i will be also uh, discussing about the uh, <clears throat> syllabus orientation okay now we will be looking at map pointing and i'm telling you now some of the very important points related to map pointing i hope uh, this one is visible to you okay this is our syllabus dear teachers for map pointing okay uh, for this year 2023 examinations many more features are now added in the syllabus but that is for the next year okay so please remember uh, these features i will be explaining now okay uh, mountains peaks plateaus plains and all this now this is very 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 important these are the prescribed color by the various uh, top level geographers water okay sea river lakes will be shown in blue color peaks passes minerals are to be shown in black color plateau to be shown in orange color desert with yellow plains with green mountain with brown cities with red dots now tropic of cancer standard meridian population winds we can use color of our own choice except the ones which are already been prescribed now these are prescribed colors so we can use any other color than this now alluvial soil you can show with gray color red soil and laterite of course with red color and black soil is shown with black color okay teachers now please remember in a map pointing very very important things that you should be uh, pointing the arrow towards the feature i repeat towards the feature for example if this is a river drawn okay and i want to write down this river's name is godavari so i will do this i will draw arrow towards the river and i will do the labeling here godavari now the council prescribes that the name should be written in capital letter okay so kindly uh, ask your children to write down the letter sorry not letter the name in in the capital letter okay but in case the child forgets to write in capital letter it doesn't mean the marks will be cut okay it doesn't mean that another thing uh, entire river may be marked here teacher okay for example if the question is asked mark and label river satluj now see river satluj originates in china comes in india and goes in pakistan so it is shown entirely but while labeling is done it should be done for the flow which is within indian territory okay so within indian territory if you see here this uh, blue color uh, patch okay so suppose brahmaputra river is asked and if you don't want to show the entire river it is okay even only this much patch is, can be shown but i prescribe that let a child know the entire course of the river and let him or her mark the flow which is within indian territory okay now these are the rivers dear student that are to be Uh, shown in 2023 examinations please remember very important thing i have purposely used some different colors so that children you should understand which color is still where okay of course we have to use blue color now see this jhelum river i have drawn full river till here 
but the flow is marked within Indian territory. See the Jhelum. Indus I have drawn completely till here, but the flow is marked within Indian territory. Okay. So in this way, we have to show the rivers. Okay. Satlaj, then this river is Yamuna here. This river is Ganga, the biggest river in India. Then Brahmaputra till it meets the river Ganga. Now, please remember uh, that <coughs> while marking the rivers, okay, you can always put the arrow towards the river, okay, and you can show these rivers. Now, uh, please remember about Tungabhadra over the lower part, only this is Tungabhadra. Now, Damodar, upper river is Damodar. In uh, some people argue that lower part is Damodar, okay. But now, as per my knowledge, whether children show the upper part or lower part, okay, for this year examination, okay, they will give both of them correct, okay. So, if you have taught the children that upper part is Damodar, let it be, do not change it now, okay. So, so uh, about these rivers now, now this, these remaining rivers are not this year in examination, but of course they are included in 2024 examination. Now, yes, while showing the winds, dear teacher, a very important point is to remember that when I show the Arabian Sea branch of the wind, southwest, I will be showing the arrow southwest monsoon wind coming towards India. This is Arabian Sea. While showing Bay of Bengal, we have to draw this line almost parallel to the eastern coast and coming towards India. Of course, this is Bangladesh. So after crossing Bangladesh, they will go towards India only. Okay. Please don't ask the children to draw randomly like this anywhere, but the arrow should be pointing towards India. Okay. Then northeast monsoon winds. I have seen some children draw the northeast monsoon winds here. But again, it now goes outside Indian territory. Second thing, these winds may not reach India because here on the way is Himalaya mountain. So they cannot show here. So you have to show this, the northeast monsoon wind. One branch over India, other branch we can show over Bay of Bengal. This other branch is also the one that is bringing rainfall to Koromandal coast. Now, one very, very important thing I have seen that uh, some teachers, um, they keep on asking some questions like mark and label South Ganga. Okay. Now, trust me in Nasik, River Godavari, they call it by name Ganga. If you ask the people of Tamil Nadu, they call this Kaveri by the name Dakshin Ganga. So it is confusing. Okay, so we should not ask the question this way, but whatever is written in the council's website that mark and label Godavari. So if they say Godavari, so we should ask the straightforward question in map marking and not the indirect questions like mark and label Dakshin Ganga or mark and label financial capital of India. Okay, instead of that, we should say mark and label. Uh, Mumbai, okay, that is financial capital of India. So instead of saying this, we have to give the direct name. Now, while showing the mountains, dear teacher, okay, Himalaya mountain, if you find, I have shown here broken. The reason is, if, if it is a continuous range, how the river will flow? Okay, so it, the river, how the river will flow in front? So therefore, it is drawn as a broken range, okay? Now, so even though I have drawn the entire mountain, but the labeling is to be done for the area, okay, which is within Indian territory. I, done, I have done here a little wrong, okay. It should be marked over here, okay, within Indian territory. Now, another important thing, when you are showing the Western Ghat, please remember that the Western Ghat will not touch the coast and it will not cut the river like this. Otherwise, how the river will flow? So it should only be touching the origin of these rivers and it, will be, it is to be drawn slightly to the south of river Kaveri only. Okay. Then while showing Nilgiri, it is in, within this curve, but it is not touching the river. Similarly, Eastern Ghats, 
Now remember, if you see the distance between coast and eastern Western Ghat, it is little. This distance is more. So you ask the children that to take this distance about eight to nine millimeter, eight to nine millimeter from the coastal area, so that this becomes correct. Another thing, Eastern Ghats are broken range, so nothing is to be drawn here because here is a delta of river Godavari and Krishna. So this is a broken range teacher, okay? Which one? I'm talking about Eastern Ghat. It doesn't go here, neither it goes here. Then Vindhya Mountain will be touching river Chambal and Betwa, but it will not touch the river Narmada at all. Satpura mountain between Narmada and between Tapi without touching the river. Okay, so when you draw this, you have to be very careful like this. This way. Don't ask the children to cut the river like this. This one will be marked wrong because it is cutting. Now, then Kokan area. Okay, Kokan area, how to be shown? It is to the south of river Tapi. Now look at this river Tunga. This is Krishna. This river is Tunga Bhadra. So the confluence is here, teacher. Confluence of this river. So draw a line this way. And the part which is above this is Kokan. Below river Kaveri, it is Malabar. Below river Krishna, it is Koromandal coast. Below Krishna. And above river Godavari, crossing Mahanadi, this is Northern Sarkar. Another very important thing, when you are asking the children to mark and label Gangetic Plain, nothing should enter in Nepal, nothing should enter in Bangladesh and in Bhutan. So to the south of Nepal, you can draw a line, taking a tangent to river Yamuna, turning over this river. Don't touch these rivers here. Because here it's a Deccan plateau. So you have to be very careful while showing the gangetic plane that it will be taking over this and it will not cut this river because here is, I told you, Deccan plateau. Sorry, Chota Nagpur plateau is there. Okay, which plateau? Chota Nagpur plateau. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> Deccan plateau, very simple to remember. Uh, now we have seen here is Western Ghat. This side is Eastern Ghat. So, so to the south of river, river Tapi, crossing, so to the south of river Tapi, this is Western Ghat, this is Eastern Ghat. So to the west of Eastern Ghat and to the east of Western Ghat, till river Tungabhadra, this area is a Deccan plateau. Please do not touch river Kaveri. Do not cross this river Narmada at all. Okay. Do not cross Eastern Ghat. Do not cross Western Ghat. So this area in between is your Deccan Plateau. Now the uh, council says that if this entire area is Deccan Plateau, there is no need that child should, uh, means they should mark it accurately. But even if the child um, points three-fourth of the area, how much? Three-fourth of the area. 75% area, still we can give them correct, okay? So that is, so we cannot be very rigid on this. Then, yes, then Andaman C, okay? Actually, this is here is Andaman C, but I have, have marked only three, four. Do not at all mark here. That is Gulf of Martaban. So nothing should be done here. Then if you look here, this black color spot is seen here. This black color spot itself is Lake Chilka. Okay, it should not cross the border and come outside. Then, when we are marking the Gulf, dear teachers, Gulf, okay, we have to be very careful. Now, see this river Tapi. Okay, now from the tip of Tapi, take a line and shade this area. This is Gulf of Khambad. It's not here, not so big. Okay. So from the tip of Goda, uh, the tip of Tapi, only upper part you can shade. Do not overshade here. This is it's the Gulf of Khambar and this part is Gulf of Kachir. Okay, this here Gulf of Malna, uh, this uh, 
Mannar is not in syllabus, then Park Street is also not in syllabus. Okay, now Nathula Pass to be shown slanting, slightly slanting, okay, not horizontal, it should be shown slanting and uh, Karakoram Pass to be shown, okay, I will suggest Karakoram Pass, one idea, okay, what we can always ask children that if this is a uh, Okay, Jammu Kashmir area. Okay, so they see this V shaped part. So, on slightly right side of that V shaped part, okay, suppose this is I'm talking about this V shaped part. So, on the right side of this V shaped part is Karakoram Pass, and on the left hand side here is K2, that is Mount Godwin Austin. Okay, now see this, I told you here. Okay, and when you draw the Sikkim, suppose this is a state of Sikkim here. Okay, so what we can do, suppose this is a state of Sikkim. Okay, uh, here is that Bhutan. So this is the base of Sikkim. So go the midway here and then draw this peak. Above this midway, do not touch the uppermost boundary. So this peak is Kanchanjunga. Some part of it is lying in India and some part is lying in Nepal. So in fact, it is the boundary between India and Nepal. Okay, and uh, then, yeah, about the uh, Mumbai high teachers. Okay, please remember it is not in a line with Mumbai city, but slightly to the northwest of Mumbai city, Mumbai high. Then Jharia is between these two rivers and exactly below Jharia, above this river is Singhum, which is the highest uh, producer of iron ore. Jharia is the largest coal mine and Mumbai High is one of the largest oil field of India. Digboy is now this year not in syllabus. Okay, then important cities, please remember, uh, this black dot itself is a city of Mumbai. Okay, this black dot. When you are showing the cities, coastal cities, none of the coastal city will cross the border. I repeat, it will not cross the Indian border. It's Indian shore, I mean to say. Suppose this is India and we want to show Mumbai city. If child shows like this, it means some part of the city has gone in Arabian Sea it will be marked wrong. So please be very careful that a coastal city will be touching the coast, but it will not enter in the sea at all. Okay, then uh, look at the tip of Sri Lanka. So if you take a straight line here, there is Kochi. Now look at the tip of river Kaveri. Take a straight line here to so where it ends, just above that is Chennai. And if you see this W-shaped part, in a W shape part, when you draw the straight line up, there is Bengaluru. Okay, Vishakhapatnam, very simple. You see this W shape here. So, where is the W ends? There is Vishakhapatnam. And for showing, <coughs> now, see children, this the teacher, this is Yamuna River. This river is River Ganga. So, what we have to tell this, children start tracing over River Yamuna. The moment it meets Ganga, put a point over there. Many children show here. That is wrong. This is Prayagraj. Okay. I hope everyone of you know its name is now changed. Official name is Prayagraj. Initially, it was Allahabad. And look at this tip. Exactly above this tip is city of Kolkata. And in between them here is Hyderabad. So you can give them the tips that this black dot is Mumbai. If I go in a straight line over here, here is Kochi. If I go straight line over here, here is Chennai. On the left hand side on this curve, here is Delhi. So we can always give these little, little tips to the children. Okay. Now thickly populated area. Uh, this is in the east, north, uh, sorry, north part. I will call this part as a north central part. Here is a uh, state of uh, Uttar Pradesh. Now it has already crossed the density of 
800. Therefore, we can say it is a densely populated state. West Bengal, all of us know West Bengal and Bihar, very densely populated. And in South India, it is of course Kerala. When we are showing the thinly populated state in the Northwest, so wherever is Thar desert area, that is thinly populated area. Jammu Kashmir, Ladakh area is also thinly populated. And in the Northeast, of course, Arunachal Pradesh is thinly populated state. It is very huge in size, but the population is under 1515 lakh. Thinnest population okay, of our country is in Arunachal Pradesh. Our Nasik city itself has population of more than 20 lakh. This entire state has got the population of less than 15 lakh. So most thinly populated is of course Arunachal Pradesh. Then please remember it is in a northeast. Then teachers, when you are showing them the uh, topic of cancer, please tell them this is uh, Kutch area. This is Saurashtra. So the tip of them is take a tip slightly above that. Then take the lower end of this river. And this is Sikkim state. Take the middle point of a Sikkim and then draw a curve line here, touching them. This is your tropic of cancer. Okay, It will not enter in Gulf of Kutch at all. And second thing, the city of Prayagraj. Here is delta of Godavari. And easternmost side of Sri Lanka are to be connected. That is your standard meridian. Now, <clears throat> finally, the difficult map, okay, we can always ask the children to learn this by heart, okay. Now, this uh, black soil in Gujarat area, this uh, Deccan plateau area, but in examination, they will generally specify, show the black soil in South India. So, you will be showing only this part. Or if the question is asked, show the black soil in Northeast India. So, if they say Northeast, please remember, here is alluvial soil around river Brahmaputra and here in Meghalaya there is a laterite soil. So the remaining part here is red soil. Okay, so red soil in northeast, red soil in south, red soil in northwest. So that way you can always ask the children to learn. Okay, now So after seeing this now, so let us now uh, look at the very quickly the syllabus part, okay, which uh, you people are already aware. We have already seen what is a syllabus for map pointing, dear teachers, okay? And the third desert and everything. Then uh, the syllabus for, yeah. In topography, please remember, we don't have to show valley, ridge, plateau, water divide, escarpment for this year. But next year, 2024, these all are present. For next year syllabus, this everything is there, okay? Now, in identification now indirect distance using thread not in syllabus we have to use only eight cardinal points eight sometimes north northeast and northeast north these kind of things are not there okay north south east west northeast northwest southeast southwest these eight only eight cardinal points are there then prominent village can be identified uh, if there is a uh, metal road, if there is a dispensary, if there is police choki, if there is uh, police uh, station, if there is hospital, then all of them definitely are prominent villages. Now in drainage pattern, okay, dendritic, realized and radial, no uh, undefined drainage pattern, no disappearing drainage pattern, okay. In settlements, we do not have isolated and linear settlement 
this year in examination okay now about time management teachers this is my idea a simple calculation tells us that in students have to solve maximum eight questions okay maximum that section one is compulsory that is 30 mark and section two they are expected to solve any five so three plus five becomes eight okay so eight questions to be solved and we have got time of 120 minutes so if time of 120 minutes so 15 at 720 it means they get 15 minutes time to solve one question but we have to tell that children if you use 15 minutes to solve one question then you will not have time to re recheck your paper so you should finish your one question in minimum 12 maximum 13 minutes so if a child finish one question in 12 to 13 minutes suppose 13 minutes it takes eight questions to be solved 13 at 104 child is still left with 16 minutes to recheck the paper and also to underline the key words now now question four please remember totally based on climate five is soil six is natural vegetation seven is water then question number eight is minerals energy nine is full agriculture all three chapters of agriculture for 10 marks two industries for 10 mark topography sorry but uh, this transport is 10 and waste management is 10 now if children study five questions thoroughly for example generally children study uh, lesson five uh, sorry climate soil natural vegetation water resources and transport they find it easy so they thoroughly study five chapters but i always tell children that instead of studying five chapters thoroughly study six chapters the reason is it is always better to remember one question extra the another benefit of studying one chapter extra is if child knows the five six chapter thoroughly for example one two three four five six suppose these chapters he knows thoroughly that means from remaining chapters he has to only study the mcqs thoroughly and we can provide them lot of lot of mcqs for the same okay that means just for three marks the child doesn't have to really study the full lesson in detail but he can always prepare those topics using the mcq so you can make 20 mcqs 30 40 as per your choice okay also ask the students to write down the paper in serial order that is always better also answers to be written point wise point wise two mark questions two points one mark question one point that is the best way and we should attempt the best five and do not really waste our time in solving extra question but if they have extra time they can always solve okay give as many questions as possible in the form of mcqs for those chapters which children are not going to study thoroughly i mean to say they are going to study only five chapters thoroughly or six so then remaining three chapters we can make as many mcqs as possible and tell them to study use of color pencils is always recommended and if you can tell the children to study the data in a tab tabular form for example soil characteristic distribution of minerals crops then in tabular form they can remember very very well okay so uh, now in non-conventional energy resources please remember they do not have to study the disadvantages of non-conventional energy resources but for energy resources yes advantages and disadvantages both things are there okay so i have very quickly gone through <laughs> the many many points dear teacher okay and uh, i hope you found this session useful okay so over to you jatin sir yes sir thank you very much indeed it was a very informative and wonderful session i hope everybody would agree to me and uh, if you all agree you can all do a thumbs up share a thumbs up yes thank you shabana ma'am
thank you vinu ma'am uh, wonderful sir lot of thumbs up received thank you thank you everyone yes uh, roshni ma'am thank you uh, so uh, we can take few questions uh, right now if you have questions you can uh, either unmute yourself or you can just send a message we will unmute you any one have any questions uh, lot of thumbs up still messages coming in yes sir uh, so uh, everybody is asking for the ppt can we send uh, share ppt yes sir yeah, yeah. So yes, we uh, PPT we will uh, share it in group. जो सर ने group डाला मैं link डाला है we will share PPT in group. Uh, right, lot of thank you messages, sir. I think everybody is clear and we don't have any questions. So uh, just a uh, important update uh, is that we uh, Goel Brothers Prakashan have released these map practice books which were shown in the PPT. So uh, I'm I'm uh, sharing a link with them uh, on chat chat box. I, I'm sharing a link with everybody. So if you you can have a look at the book, or if you want samples, you can. I'm sharing my mail ID. You can write down to us. We will give you samples. Dear yeah, teachers, uh, please look at this book. Okay, and uh, this is yes. the actual book. Okay, that uh, this year uh, I have written. To be very frank, trust me. it is one of the most clear book you can ever see in a market okay i'll show you just one of the uh, map over here you can see how beautiful how clean how crystal clear the things are there okay so a lot of efforts are taken here in order to make it absolutely clear okay and uh, please remember in each chapter there are total 18 topo sheets here teacher 18 and on each topo sheet i have framed 45 questions absolutely thoroughly 45 questions with model answers okay but answers are not given but the place is given for solving the question now how the child will know whether the answer is right or wrong so a qr code is provided so child can scan it and verify his answer if we simply give the answer so they only uh, learn the answer okay this is question this is answer this is question so they won't get the practice okay but we have already uh, provided that practice map in the beginning okay many pictures which i showed you in the beginning are already present in this book that what is a causeway okay these pictures are also there what is a river island what is depression what is a survey tree what is over a tank and these pictures are also provided to give them a clear idea okay and uh, yes there are the this book will be also having the syllabus that is for 2024 examination next year's examination i said many things which were not in this year's examination are already included in next year's examination they are also there and if you calculate 18 maps okay 45 questions on each okay so even if i take 40 18 for uh, 72 so 750 and 18 for uh, 90 that means 800 and 10 questions i don't think anybody will give such a thorough kind of <laughs> a practice to anybody in map practice okay now of course there are uh, map pointing which i showed you so that map pointing okay all maps are also provided here so for thorough practice okay so sir will be sharing that link and uh, if, if yes need, if i you have shared the link copy, you if you need that uh, uh, sample copy you can always uh, click on it and i had a today talk with uh, suresh goel sir also okay mr goel and he was also telling me that sir we will be sending the sample copies to the teachers for their reference believe me teachers Uh, this book is made with extreme hard effort extreme okay extreme hard effort and you uh, i promise you will find it very useful not only for you but also for your students okay thank you yes sir uh thank you once again sir i have shared uh, the link for both samples and uh, 
uh, if they want to purchase, they can purchase using the link. Uh, with this, we would like to thank all the participants here who were here till uh, from last two years. Uh, special thanks to you. And uh, once again, uh, thank you, Sanjeev, sir. With this, we will end this webinar now. And yes. hopefully, we will come back soon. Uh, I think Shabana, ma'am, uh, wants to speak something. Ma'am, you can unmute and speak. We are not able to hear you, ma'am. You, your voice is not coming, ma'am. I'm sorry. Hello. Still, yes, we can hear you now, ma'am. Please. Uh, sir, I just want to tell you that, sir, we want more such sessions. At least every year, one session of Sanjeev, sir. So yes, yes, definitely, ma'am. We will try and uh, you know arrange more and more sessions for all of you. Uh, Thank you so much. Definitely. Yes. Uh, with this, we will end the webinar for today and come back again with a new series of webinar. Thank you, everybody. Have a good evening.